Have you ever wondered what exactly is the Federal Reserve's dual mandate? It's a question that's been asked by many, but understood by few. It's like a riddle wrapped in an enigma, shrouded in economic jargon. But don't worry, we're here to cut through the noise and get to the heart of the matter. What does the dual mandate mean? How does it guide the Federal Reserve's decisions? These are the questions we will explore. Today, we unravel the mystery of the Federal Reserve's dual mandate. Before we dive into the dual mandate, you need to understand what the Federal Reserve is. The Federal Reserve, familiarly known as the Fed, is not just another government agency, it's the central banking system of the United States, and it plays a pivotal role in the nation's economy. Established in the year 1913, the Federal Reserve was created to provide the country with a safe, flexible and stable monetary and financial system. The Fed is independent within the government, meaning it operates within the general economic policies of the government, but carries out its work independently of political pressure to ensure the health of the economy. The structure of the Federal Reserve is unique. It consists of a board of governors located in Washington, D.C., 12 regional Federal Reserve banks spread across major cities in the U.S., and a Federal Open Market Committee. The board of governors, appointed by the president and confirmed by the Senate, oversees the entire system. Now what does the Fed do? It has several key functions. It conducts the nation's monetary policy to promote maximum employment, stable prices, and moderate long-term interest rates in the U.S. economy. It also supervises and regulates banks and other important financial institutions to ensure the safety and soundness of the nation's banking and financial system and to protect the credit rights of consumers. And lastly, it maintains the stability of the financial system and contains systemic risk that may arise in financial markets. In a nutshell, the Federal Reserve is the watchdog of the U.S. economy. It can increase or decrease interest rates to control inflation or stimulate growth. It can also adjust the amount of money that banks must have in their reserves, affecting how much money is in circulation. The Federal Reserve's actions affect the lives of every American and have significant global implications. Its decisions impact everything from the interest rates on our mortgages to the prices we pay for goods and services, and even the returns on our investments. Now that you understand the Federal Reserve, we can delve into its dual mandate. The dual mandate of the Federal Reserve might sound complex, but it breaks down to two simple objectives. Now let's take a moment to unpack these. The first part of the dual mandate is maximizing employment. In layman's terms, the Federal Reserve wants as many people as possible to have jobs. Imagine a bustling city where everyone's busy at work. That's the kind of economic activity the Federal Reserve aims to promote. Maximizing employment doesn't just mean creating more jobs, though. It's about creating quality jobs that pay well and offer security. It's about ensuring that every person who's willing and able to work can find a job that suits their skills and aspirations. It's about making sure that the economy is humming along at a pace that's not too hot, not too cold, but just right. Now, onto the second objective, stabilizing prices. This one's a bit trickier to explain, but let's try an analogy. Imagine you're planning a road trip. You've budgeted a certain amount for gas, but when you get to the pump, the price has skyrocketed. That's not a situation anyone wants to be in, right? Well, the Federal Reserve feels the same way about the economy. They want prices to be predictable and stable, so businesses and consumers can plan and budget effectively. Stabilizing prices doesn't mean freezing them, Prices naturally go up and down based on supply and demand, but the Federal Reserve tries to keep these fluctuations within a certain range to prevent sudden spikes or crashes. They use various tools like interest rates and monetary policy to achieve this. So, there you have it. The dual mandate of the Federal Reserve is all about maximizing employment and stabilizing prices. It's about creating a thriving, stable economy where everyone can find a good job and businesses can plan for the future with confidence. In essence, the dual mandate is about keeping employment high and prices stable. The first part of the dual mandate is maximizing employment. Now what does that mean exactly? In simple terms, maximizing employment is about ensuring as many people as possible are gainfully employed. It's about creating a robust job market where opportunities abound and individuals can secure work that suits their skills and aspirations. But how does the Federal Reserve, an institution we typically associate with money and banking, contribute to this? The answer lies in its control over monetary policy. Through this, the Federal Reserve can indirectly influence employment levels in the country. Here's how it works. The Federal Reserve can adjust interest rates, either making it cheaper or more expensive to borrow money. 
When the Fed lowers interest rates, it becomes less costly for businesses to borrow money to invest in their operations. This investment can lead to expansion, new projects, and yes, you guessed it, more jobs. As businesses grow and new ventures take off, they need more hands on deck, leading to increased hiring and a healthier job market. On the flip side if the Federal Reserve raises interest rates, borrowing becomes more expensive. This can make businesses think twice before taking out loans for expansion or new projects, potentially leading to slower job growth. But it's not just about interest rates. The Federal Reserve also has the power to influence the money supply. By increasing the amount of money in circulation, the Fed can stimulate spending, which in turn can lead to higher demand for goods and services, and subsequently, for workers to produce and deliver those goods and services. However, it's a delicate balance. The Federal Reserve must ensure its actions don't lead to inflation or financial instability. It's a high-stakes balancing act, and the Fed's decisions can have far-reaching impacts on the job market and the broader economy. So the Federal Reserve plays a crucial role in maintaining healthy employment levels in the U.S. Its decisions on monetary policy can stimulate job growth or slow it down, making it a key player in the quest to maximize employment. The second part of the dual mandate is stabilizing prices. Ah, price stability, it sounds rather dull, doesn't it? But hold on, it's more thrilling than it first appears. You see, stabilizing prices is akin to walking a tightrope. The Federal Reserve, our intrepid tightrope walker, aims to keep inflation, the general rise in prices, low and stable. So what does stabilizing prices actually mean? Well imagine a world where prices fluctuate wildly. One day, a loaf of bread costs a dollar, the next it costs ten. That would be quite a ride, wouldn't it? Not to mention, it would wreak havoc on our economy. Price stability then, is all about avoiding such roller coaster rides. It's about keeping inflation, and thus, prices, predictable, and steady. But how does the Federal Reserve do this? Welcome to the world of interest rates. The Federal Reserve has a powerful tool at its disposal, the ability to raise or lower interest rates. If inflation is too high, meaning prices are rising too quickly, the Federal Reserve can raise interest rates. This makes borrowing more expensive, which, in turn, slows down spending and cools off the economy. On the other hand, if inflation is too low, the Federal Reserve can lower interest rates to stimulate spending and heat up the economy. But that's not the only tool in the Federal Reserve's toolkit. It can also adjust the amount of money in circulation. By buying and selling government securities, the Federal Reserve can influence the amount of money flowing through our economy, and thus, the rate of inflation. In essence, stabilizing prices is a balancing act. It's about maintaining just the right level of inflation, not too high, not too low, to keep our economy humming along smoothly. In this way, the Federal Reserve ensures that the purchasing power of the dollar remains fairly stable over time. So, what are the key points to remember about the Federal Reserve's dual mandate? Well, let's take a quick trip down memory lane. The Federal Reserve's dual mandate is a two-pronged objective set by Congress. This mandate is like a mission statement for the Fed, guiding its decisions and policies. The first part of this mandate is about maximizing employment. This is about creating an environment where jobs are plentiful and unemployment is as low as possible. The Fed aims to foster a vibrant economy where businesses thrive and everyone who wants a job can find one. The second part of the mandate is about stabilizing prices. This is about keeping inflation at bay. The Fed wants to ensure that the cost of goods and services doesn't skyrocket overnight, making it hard for people to afford basic necessities. Price stability also gives businesses the confidence to invest and grow, knowing they won't be blindsided by sudden price hikes. So, the dual mandate is about balance. It's about creating an economy that's not too hot, causing runaway inflation, and not too cold, leading to high unemployment. It's like Goldilocks porridge, it needs to be just right. Understanding the Federal Reserve's dual mandate is key to understanding the Fed's role in the U.S. economy. It's a balancing act of promoting job growth while keeping inflation in check. Keep these points in mind, and you'll have a good grasp of the Federal Reserve's dual mandate. If you enjoyed this video, please like, share, and comment. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell to keep up with the latest content.